copy of what a day that will be. That'd be like saying, mm -hmm. what a day that will be. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> There is coming a day when the heartache shall come. No more cloud in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. Only peace forevermore on that What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day, that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, there'll be no sorrow, sad. Amen. No more burn. No more sickness nor pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Amen, yes. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Amen. 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 What a day that will be. So I'll let us everybody know that it's the birthday for John Jenkins today. Amen. Happy birthday, John Amen. Jenkins. Amen. You know, everybody who uh, joined me in singing happy birthday to him. <coughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. birthday yeah. brother john we appreciate you and love you a great asset to the church and to the kingdom of god you're always um there to call folks and uh, visit them when they when it's needed we appreciate you uh, very much and hope the lord blesses you with many more till he comes uh, ever how long that'll be and uh um, so thank the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that song, what day that be? That comes right out of Revelation 21. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says in 21 verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears yeah. from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, yeah. neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. Amen. Amen. That's our hope in Christ Jesus. I tell you, when we uh, go through this life and trials and troubles and 
tribulations and heartaches and struggles. I'm glad that we've got hope in Him. Amen. Amen. And that day's a coming. It's going to be a reality. No more doctors. No more uh, uh, hospitals. No more nursing homes. No more funeral homes. No more state patrolmen. No <laughs> none of that stuff. Amen. Uh, we got to be with Him forever. So uh, we just uh, what what how wonderful that is to have that hope in Him. There's a lot of people that don't have that hope, and uh, you know we're trying to point them in that direction. So. Good to be here tonight. Good to be back in the house. Lord, let's pray for all those that are not with us tonight that's out traveling or sick or afflicted or whatever. And uh, let's remember them that God just take care of them and uh, just bring them back uh, safely. Anna Mae, she's traveling uh, down in Raleigh with her daughter. So remember them as they're on the road and bring them back. Let's remember, darling, uh, Tyler's surgery was, was a success. Everything went good with his surgery. Uh, he's been in ICU for two days, though. He's just... Uh, with all that's going on with him, uh, he's, he's just his heart rate and I think his blood pressure and some other things is quite regulated. Uh, so they've had him in ICU just monitoring him. And she said he's doing much better today and they got to move him, keep him there one more night and move him to a room tomorrow. So uh, just pray for the, his continual healing and uh, that God would just uh, um, touch them and watch over them and bring them back <clears throat> to their home where I know they'll be more at ease and at peace, so um, just just continue to pray for her and Tyler. She wants to thank the church for your prayers, uh, for your surgery, and, and that she loved everybody, so just keep them in your prayers. We also, let's remember Nathan Setzer. Uh, Lord knows what he needs tonight, and uh, pray for him. I'm not really sure. I haven't heard a whole lot more news, but I know he's going to have some tests. Uh, they found something on his lungs and his uh, liver, uh, so uh, just pray for him that uh, that God would just be with that family and, and touch him and mostly, you know, deal with them um, in other ways that they might need it. So um, remember them as well. Also, uh, uh, any more requests? Mom, continue to pray for her. She's doing well. Got that thing off her eye and she's seeing really good out of her eye. So uh, just uh, thank you for all the prayers on her behalf. And um, <clears throat> a while back, we was praying for a co worker of mine. A friend of hers uh, that he, they had had cancer and is devastated. And, uh, they'd, uh, uh, we'd been praying and other churches had been praying. When she came into work uh, yesterday and told me, said, "Oh, uh, said you know my friend y'all been praying for at church." And he went back. Uh, he went back to the doctor and said um, uh, that mass they found was uh, what is it? Benign. 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 And, and she she was just uh, so ecstatic and. Uh, and I don't know how often she goes to church, but you know when people come to you and ask you to pray, it makes you feel good. They got that much confidence in you and your church and your church family, and so maybe that might just touch her. And and uh, but anyways, we just thank the Lord for that. For the good news on that. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer, Brother John? My sister. Let's pray for them. Amen. 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 Certainly we will. Amen. Never give up. Amen. Amen. Anything else? Um, remember the laws. Remember our church. Remember um, uh, 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 those that don't come to church. Amen. Yes. And pray for them. And we all got family and friends and loved ones yeah. to pray for. I got a special request tonight. A uh, fella comes in the store all the time. Carmy. You know Carmy, don't you? Remember him, uh, Terry? Got the black guy, Carmen Young, got it, something wrong with his eye. His eyes messed up. You would if you see him, I'm sure. But anyway, he uh, he's a good, good person. And I, I don't know what all happened. I've talked to him a little bit. But he had went to UNC Chapel Hill. They said he was brilliant. And if you talk to him now, he, he's just he's just brilliant. And um, something happened with him. He got mixed up on drugs years ago. And I think he even done some... Uh, prison time. Actually, he didn't do nothing at that, um, but he was going to pick up something for somebody, and and he got caught with it, and he went to prison and come out. And he just had a just a you know pretty rough life, and but he's a he he won't ask for anything. He he's just humble as he can be, just just a good person in in general. But um, he he lived down below the store, and his house had caught on fire the other day, and. 
Uh, we didn't have no power or anything like that, but it did burn burn wood in there. And uh, I think the the flue was was clogged up or wasn't clean properly, and it caused the house on fire. And anyway, he lost uh, everything that he had in there, and he didn't have a whole lot to begin with. And so, um, just let's pray for him. And um, and I'm gonna set again Sunday for Sunday night, and I can do it Monday. But uh, if you've got anything you can donate, canned goods. Now, uh, when I say that, he, he's uh, something that's ready, readily uh, accessible to eat, or just heat up really quick, like the the beefaronis and spaghetti and meatballs, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I know he loves sardines, stuff that I keep, crackers. Um, if you if you want to bring some of that Sunday, I'm gonna get up something and take it to him down to the store. Um, because the, it, the needs are um, just uh, like I said, just just stuff that um, individuals uh, um, uh, snack cakes or like the 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 little boxed apple pies and cherry pies and stuff like that. Stuff that I keep for a while that he can just you know can just eat like that. He he always gets stuff like that and um, at the store. And, um, it's just I hate to I hate to see it. You know he's. Uh, like I said, he won't ask for nothing if he comes up, and we always, we're generous down there with people. And if you get something, it's $2.13, and he's got $2.00, and he's got $2 down, don't, don't worry about the three cent or whatever, you know, no, he's gonna pay it. He, he don't ask for anything, and, um, but but just pray for him and um, remember him. And uh, uh, he's living um, with somebody else right now in a camper, I believe, uh, for now, but, uh, um, He's, people all over our station look for him every day and want him to come and help them work stuff because that they say he'll outwork 15 anybody's and uh, bless his heart he'll go pick blackberries all summer long he'll spend 10 hours picking one little guy with blackberries and he will, he'll sell them for five dollars and uh, if you ever pick blackberries you know yeah. that ain't that ain't good but that's just the way he is and uh, so pray for him, remember him, and if you can, just bring some stuff in Sunday, and I'll make a, another announcement Sunday morning for Sunday night, and then I can take it down there uh, to the store uh, to him on, on Tuesday or Monday when I go back uh, to work, and I know it, it, it'd be, it'd be uh, really appreciated. So uh, if, if you can do that, just you don't gotta bring a lot if everybody just bring one something uh, that'll get him through for a little while. Um, anything else before we go to Lord in prayer? <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's pray for the laws. Pray for our country and our leaders. Again, we need to pray, church, for our country and what's going on. It's just a mess. and uh, We just got to pray that God continue to move and bless our nation and, and bless his people uh, standing in the gap. Amen. He said, if my people, that's us, will, call, uh, will humble themselves and, and uh, turn from the wicked way and repent, I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. So let's remember all these. Any else spoke my race saying I know there's many that we forgot about tonight, so let's bow our heads. Brother David May, would you leave us in prayer, please? Dear God and precious Heavenly Father, give you thanks for the evening you've given us here, Heavenly Father, allowing us to assemble here in a meeting place. Here yes, Lord. Lord. Fellow Christians, that we pray the Lord's Spirit on the meeting tonight, on the service tonight, dear Heavenly Father, as, uh, as the words open up and reveal to us, dear Heavenly Father. And we apply these instructions to our heart, to our spirit, to our minds, dear Heavenly Father. We pray for all those that can't be here, dear Heavenly Father. Yes, all yes. Those that are in need, yeah, you know their need. To know those that are traveling, those yes. that are working, dear Heavenly Father, when they want to be here, just can't be here for whatever yes. circumstances yes. are. Yes. Most of all, we pray for the lost. Don't know you. Yes. 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 We pray for them also. Yes. We pray for the healing touch. And those yes. yes, God. Yes. Physical healing and mental healing. And yes, Jesus. Healing, dear yes, Father. Lord. Touch them in a mighty, mighty way. Yes, Lord. 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 Lord, protect Lord. those around us. Darling and Tyler. Yes, yes. thank you, Lord. Lord. Provide comfort for Darling. Yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let uh, Tyler be loved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, And then we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, Matthew chapter 6. Uh, by any sauce, it just probably be stuff like that. Um, Matthew chapter 6. That was pretty random, but I just thought about it. So <laughs> just give me some ideas of what you can bring. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. We got down to verse 16. Now we've been talking about uh, um, the Christian walk. And the disciples had went to Jesus and they asked him, 
to teach us to pray, and well, he gave them a, a, a just a, a, a wonderful sermon and teachings here on how the Christians uh, not only should pray, but how we ought to uh, act uh, concerning others, how we ought to react concerning uh, others. You know, I think it was um, um, Isaac's third law of physics, for every action there's an equal reaction. you ever thought about that? For every action there's an equal reaction. And that pertains to just about anything. I remember when I lived in Florida as a teenager and uh, uh, I had family down there so I went and stayed down there and lived with them. thought that would be just the ideal. You know, and, which I enjoyed it while I was down there but it, it's just not for me. Christmas just ain't the same with the palm tree in your living room. and It's hard to decorate, but uh, uh, me and my cousin, we worked at Red Lobster, and uh, like a typical Goins, he's, he, he was uh, quick-tempered and uh, just get angry real easy. And I remember we was in there, and he had got mad about something was back in the kitchen in Red Lobster, and uh, they had these little glass trays that we would put um, shrimp scampies and um, scallops and stuff like that in and we'd prep them and then we'd cook them. Well, uh, something had set him off and anyway, when it did, he grabbed that little that little porcelain dish and he slung that thing up against the wall Well, it broke and a piece come back and it cut him right there in the arm. And, and, and that's exactly what I told him. I said, well, you know, that's, that's uh, Isaac's third law of, of physics. For, what's that? He said, for, for every action, there's an equal reaction. And so... Uh, but, but that's true. And, and dealing with people, it's the same way. People is going to react yes, to does. us the way we act to them. And so forth. And some of them, somebody comes up to us and, and they're rude and obnoxious or they get ill with us, you know, then, then, then our reaction more times than not without thinking is going to be the same as they give us. So uh, Jesus is telling them, you know, uh, not only how they should act, but how they should react. And, um, and if we just think about that and, and forgiving one another and, uh, and I hope you studied some on that because that's something I know we all need help in and if you say oh preacher man I'm just, I just forgive everybody and it just comes so easy to me and yeah okay whatever but yeah. you know if Jesus thought it would be easy he wouldn't have took the time to tell them and if he, if, he, if he knew that they didn't need to be told, then he wouldn't have told them to begin with. But see, Jesus knows that, that we, uh, as, as humans, and, 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 and we had to fight that old man, that old nature that we, that we served for so long, Jesus knew that we would struggle with these things. And he said, when these things come about, this is how you're going to act and react to them. So um, when he told us about praying, you know, all those things are, um, they're, they're circumstantial. Jesus said when we pray, we've got to pray in a certain manner. Not exactly like he told them to pray, but uh, we got to pray understanding who God is, where he is, and what he is. And then after you begin to pray, Jesus said when you pray and you ask God to forgive you of your sins, make sure that we're not holding other people's faults against them. So we begin to release that. And all of a sudden, then we've got a clearer communication with God. Amen? And, and, and God hears us because uh, we've, we've obeyed His Word. And so we got down to there, and now we're going to get in again. Now, He started out talking about hypocrites. Uh, we're good. Uh, hypocrites is, is, is really a, a mislabeled term in today's world. Um, I hear it all the time. People come to the store, you hear it. People talk about somebody. Well, they're, they're a hypocrite. And what they're saying and they're, they're, what they're thinking is, is, well, you know, they go to church every Sunday and they sing in the choir or he preaches or they play the piano or they're a deacon or, or you know, they teach Sunday school or they're, they're a church member. They work at the church. They cut the grass and all that. And they, they, and, and, and they do all of this and they say they love the Lord and everything. And, and we, we, heard them, uh, we heard them say something they shouldn't say or we, we, we seen them over here where they shouldn't have went. Church, that's not a hypocrite. Now, what I'm talking about is uh, we as Christians are going to fail. We shouldn't, we shouldn't do it purposefully, but we are. 
And if I see Brother Jerry uh, lose his temper, and, and um, uh, you know, and, and I say, well, he's a hypocrite. Well, that wouldn't be right because I know Brother Jerry. Uh, just to say because he lost his temper, uh, now I'm not saying it's okay to lose your temper, but, but his heart the whole time is, is, is focused on God. He loves Jesus, and he's doing everything in his power to live for God. And if he fails here and there, that don't make him a hypocrite. You see? A, a hypocrite is somebody that pretends to be something that they're not, an actor. That's the Greek word. It means actor. Somebody that comes to church, somebody that, that wants to be seen, somebody that, that, that wants people to believe that they're something they're not. Now, when we make a mistake, we're not trying to make people believe we're something we're not. That's part of the human nature. And as we progress in, in the, this walk with Christ, uh, Christ takes a lot of those mistakes out of our life. And I'll tell you what, when we do make a mistake, the Holy Spirit's going to be there to check us on it, won't He? Yeah. And, and we'll make it right with God, and, we'll, and God will help us, and he'll, 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 he'll get us over that. But, but uh, Jesus started out talking about these hypocrites. These are people that like to be seen of men. They like to be heard of men. They like for people to talk good about them. They like for uh, to sit in the high places. They like to have the power and the rule and the authority. But what Jesus said, and they like to praise him openly. They like to make long prayers. And they like, to, uh, they like for people to see them for their good works that they've done. But what Jesus is saying, all of these things that you're doing externally on the inside, you're not even regarding me in your heart. You, you, you have, Jesus is saying, look, you, you're saying you love me and you serve me and you call me Lord and God's your Father, but, but in your heart you have no desire to do the things of God. You're just doing it for the show of men. Now that is a hypocrite. So we've got to always distinguish the two. And I've even, I've even told people, I said, look, yeah, uh, they might be hypocrites in that church, but I tell you what, don't go to that church. Go to the next one. You'll find them in that church as well. Yeah, Amen? Yeah. Uh, and most of the time, uh, the person that keeps finding these people don't realize that they're probably the problem to begin with. <laughs> I mean, if you can't find a church somewhere that suits you, then you might be the problem. Amen? So... Uh, now, in verse 19, he's going to pick up with that, that teaching again about, about doing things to please men and not to please God. So he says, verse 16, Moreover, or uh, when you fast, now he's talking about fasting here. Um, now that's, a, that's something that later on I'd like to, I want to get on and teach about fasting. <laughs> People say, should we fast? We're not fasting. Uh, well, a lot of people do it just like the hypocrites are doing here. But Jesus said, when you fast, be not as the hypocrite. See, there's that word hypocrite again. Now, who's Jesus calling a hypocrite? It's not somebody that's making mistakes. These are the top religious people in his day. Uh, these are the people that the priest, the high priest, the religious sect, uh, the Jews, the people that go into the temple and, and worship every day, the people that teach the law of God, the people that stand up here, uh, that would be equivalent to me in my day in preaching the word, the people that stood before uh, the people in the temple and they would teach the laws of God to the people. And Jesus said, you're a hypocrite. Now look, when you fast, be not as hypocrites. Do not fast. And would, it, it means to... Uh, um, uh, do without, or, or to, uh, it's really a cleansing. They would, they would fast. They would go without eating, or, or drinking, or, or they would just, they would just, uh, uh, you know, just put all that aside for a period of time. And there's nothing, certainly nothing wrong with fasting. If you want to, if you want to bring your your uh, body under subjection to the spirit, then then pray about fasting. And, and we're going to figure out how to do this here. But you say, well, what do you mean? But, uh, these people come to me and say, Preacher, I'd love to fast, and, but I can't because I've got a medical condition. I've got to eat. You know, so, and, and that's okay. But, but fasting means more than just doing without food or doing without water. Uh, we can fast our time. We can give a certain amount. God, I'm going to, this, this particular time of day or, 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 or 
I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you 20 minutes of my time. I'm not gonna turn on no TV. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eat. I'm not gonna drink for nothing. But I'm just gonna give you 20 minutes of my time. And 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 God, I'm gonna give to you. And I'm gonna do that maybe uh, every day for seven days. Just God to get a spend a little bit of time with you and closer. Now, you can do all fast. And, and what I'm telling you is the teaching here on fasting. Uh, it, it teaches your body to be controlled by the Spirit if you do it properly. Uh, because when you when you fast, you say, "Well, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pray about this situation." Uh, fasting, a lot of people are fast when they're really praying for something for God to move, or or um, uh, praying for God to uh, uh, heal or deliver, and they'll fast. They say, "God, I'm gonna show you that I mean business." Now, is it a requirement to fast? Absolutely not. But I think when we do it sincerely, I believe God acknowledges that and God blesses us and. And but I tell you, when you say, "Well, I'm going to go one day, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to have a meal, I'm just going to, I'm just going to trust God." And what I'm saying by that is, that you want to see how quick your, how much control your body has over you. You start passing up food. But it, it, if you, if you serious about fasting and going a day without eating, then, buddy, you better rely on the Lord, Amen. Amen. Because your, your body's going to say, "Feed me, feed me, feed me." So I don't want to break the fast because I'm trying to. I'm, I'm showing God. God, I'm, I'm giving this day to you, God. I want you to help me. I want you to strengthen my body, my mind, and my soul and teach it to depend upon you. So that's what they would do. They would fast, but they didn't do it for those purposes. You said, when you do this fast, be not as hypocrites and, and of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say they had their reward now. Again, this was an outward show. These Pharisees, they would announce that they was fasting for God. And, and when they fasted, they wouldn't bathe, they wouldn't comb their hair, they'd walk around. You ever seen somebody, that, you know, had pity for you? They want you to feel sorry for them. They'll just, this, you know, kind of like your kids. I use that for an illustration. When, you know, come Monday morning, they just are sick and they'll just distort their faces and make, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm just so sick. And, you know, try to get you to buy into it and, and you look at them, well, you know, and, and then, you know, 3.30 soon school lets out, they miraculously recovered. Well, these Pharisees would do that. They'd just walk around. They wanted people to know that they were fasting. And that would be like me deciding to fast a, a, a Sunday. And me getting up here on Sunday morning, and I, I you know, I said, well, I'm not going to eat until after the services is over Sunday morning and Sunday night. God, I want you to empower me and empty me, and I want you to fill me with your spirit, and I'm going to trust you. And, and, and I get up, and I drink my cup of coffee, and I pass up breakfast, and I come to church, and I come in here, and I'm just, you know, and people, what's wrong, man? I'm fasting. <laughs> I'm fasting, boy. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm looking for God. I'm fasting. And get up here with church. I don't, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. You know, and just boldly, just trying. That's what they were doing. And, and Jesus said, don't, don't do like them. Don't, they, they, they wouldn't wash their hair. I mean, they wouldn't wash their face. They would just, I mean, they, when, when they, they, they had a look, and when, when people seen them, they said, oh, there's old brother, so it, boy, boy. They fasting again. They are so religious. Man, I just wish I could be like them. And that's what they wanted them to say. But Jesus saw right through them. He said in verse 17, don't, he said, don't be like them in 16, but verse 17, now look, but when, but thou, talking about you, talking about me, talking about the disciples, the believers, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast. You see, Jesus said, don't boast about it. If you're going to do something for God, if you really want to bless and keep it between you and him, and you know, people still love to brag about what they did. They did. Brother, brother, uh, Swice, good to say people come to church and just make a hobby horse out of a little something they've done, wanting to get recognition for it. They, they, I've done this, I've done that. They, they'll tell you, they'll throw in a big amount of money to the church, and, and they'll, they'll, they want everybody to know that they give that money to the church. And, and uh, you know, when they know it, they'll let you know, you know, if you uh, what they want the money used for. Well, I gave that money, but they they, they want the rest. Boy, they, I I remember. Now he didn't do it. He didn't do it for that. But 
Uh, Hank Parker, all of you know Hank Parker, uh, uh, professional bass fisherman, and um, he come to New Life up there when I was little. He went, all the Parkers went up there, and, and everybody know uh, when Hank Parker won a fishing tournament because man, the ties have been the thousands of dollars, and uh, and I mean he didn't say, but it, you know everybody knew it. But he didn't go around saying, look what I did or I did. He didn't he didn't make sure everybody got recognition for it, but. Uh, but but you would know it when he when he won that BASS boy. I mean, man, they posted that tithing up there, and, but you know that he won it. Uh, but but that's what people do. They still do that. Well, I did this, and I and, and preachers, a lot of the preachers, they want people to know everything to do. I, I well, I done this, and I do that, and, and, and they want recognition of men. A lot of preachers today, that's the only reason they invited each other to church. Is so they can pat each other on the back. Want to go to that fellow's church and say, "Well, I go over there. I can take some of his members with me when I come back." And he'll come over to his church and say, "I'll go over there and get some of his when I go back." You know, um, not all of them, but 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 they love these Pharisees love uh, being men pleasers. Let me tell you something, church. It don't matter if we please please men or not. Does it? it matters if we please God. And and so and and now I'm not talking about we ought to just not we ought to be rude about it. Well, I don't care what people think. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. Don't matter what you think. Not not in that sense. But if we would worry more about pleasing God instead of pleasing man, because hey, man can get us to the point where where we're trying to please them, and it's not a bad thing. But we're doing things that men want us to do because we want them to. To, to uh, be pleased with us instead of things that God wants us to do. I mean, the church is, is like that across the board. You know, people, we worry about what people think about us. We worry about people thinking about how we dress, how we look, what we do at church, when we do it, and how we do it, and all that. And, and, and God's not getting no glory out of that at all. We should come wanting God to be pleased with what we're doing. Come as you are, amen? I always say, come as you are. And, and, and come to please God and come to worship Him and come to learn His Word and get closer to Him and, and want to please Him, not me, not nobody in this church. If we're pleasing God, all of us, and we're where we need to be, we're going to be pleased with one another, amen? So Jesus said, don't do like they do. Uh, he said, but when you do it, do it in, in, unto the Father which is in secret, and your Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. Amen. See, these men were getting their reward down here on earth. They got the applause of men. And, and there's a lot of people like that. Did you know the Antichrist is going to be a man pleaser? He's going he, he's gonna he, to draw his power from the people building him up. And, and remember how, how uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and he loved those Hebrew boys, and, and he, he knew their God was, was, was the God, and, 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 but, but the weakness of man, and, and he, 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 he liked those uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he liked Daniel, and, and, and he, he, he let them prosper in his kingdom, and he protected them, and, and he let them do as according to their custom uh, according to what God had them. He let them eat things that, that, that uh, God would want them to eat. He, he wouldn't make them eat the things that, that the Hebrews eat and, and, and the pagans. And, and he honored all that because he knew that God was their God. But the people hated it. They despised Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, we've been in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom all these years, and we rose up to the top of the ranks, and, and man, we've done this for him, and we've done that for him, and, and man, and, and, and now all of a sudden he gets these old Jews in here, and look how he's, he's treating them better than he's treating us, and, and they found favor in his eyes, and, and he's kind of forgotten about us, and, and, and boy, that old jealousy creeps in, and, and, and so they said, what are we going to do, fellas? I mean, he likes him boys. We can't say nothing against them because if we do, he's going to get mad at us. So what are we going to do? So they devised a plan. They went to the heart of the matter. They went and told old Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, they ain't no king like you. As old uh, Bret Hart would say, you the best they is, the best they was, and the best they ever will be. 
King, I, you're so, I, King, I tell you what we ought to do since, since you're, you're the best king. King, you ought to make a, a statue and, in your image and your likeness. And, and because you're so great, King, uh, you make that image and, and, and we're going to play music. And when the music starts, King, everybody will bow. So they got to the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. They begin to build it. And he loved to hear the pleasure of men. Pilate. What did Pilate do? Knowing Jesus was guilt free. Jesus hadn't done anything. Said it multiple times. I, I find no fault in this man. But rather what? Wanting to please the people. You see? It, it, men, that's we, we, we want to please, we want we want we want accolades of man, but we ought to be looking to God. What Nebuchadnezzar should have said, hey fellas, you better watch out. <laughs> Hey, these boys right here, they, they serve the living Amen. God. Yeah, you might serve me, and, and, and but these guys right here, they serve the living God. But he began to, began to be pleased with what they're saying and, and say, man, that'd be pretty neat for everybody to bow down to my image, you know, and, and, and all of that. And, and But see, those men that hated Shadrach, they know that they wouldn't bow. Amen. You see? And, and, and so, so these hypocrites, they love being seen of men. And, and people, we, we still like that day. We, 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 ought, we, we, sh we should do things to make each other happy. But we ought not do it to, to get put our name out there. And that's what they, what they did. Jesus said, when you do it, do it in secret, and God will reward you. Look, if you want to fast for God, fast. But don't tell nobody. Do it. You, you're just between you and God saying, now God, you're going to help me with this. God, I, I need you, and, and God, uh, this is just between me and you, Father. Jesus said, put your best suit of clothes on, take a bath, wash your face, comb your hair, and just, get, Larry, when you, when you get to church preaching, don't let them know you're fasting, and, and don't, don't, don't worry about what they think. He said, man, you get up there, and you just, you just be filled with joy and power and the Spirit of God, and please me, and don't worry about nothing. And he said, you'll get your reward. Yes. See, that their reward was to be honored by men. When we, when we choose to please God, God said, you'll not go unrewarded. Amen. We see people all the time. Well, don't it seem like that? We try our best to live for God. We do try to do everything right. And, and people out here just live in any old way they want to, don't care, don't have no knowledge, don't have no desire to serve God. And boy, they just keep prospering and keep, I mean, just everything good happens to them. And, and boy, they just socially at the peak of their, their, their career and, and everybody loves them and all that. Well, see, that's the reward. Read biographies of some of the, uh, the country's richest men that's died. See, their reward was here on earth. Hired Hughes, he, he, got, he had his reward here on earth. But he was so wealthy and so rich and he was so afraid of dying. They, they said he, he was so afraid of catching germs that in his last years he would lock himself in his room and wouldn't come out. He, 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 he was afraid he had to have everything sterilized. And he was particular about what he ate and, and who gave it to him and, and said they wouldn't, he wouldn't even allow them to clip his fingernails because he was afraid they would be dirty and he would, he would catch a disease and die. And said when he died, he died and he said his, his fingernails was, 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 was just so long. I mean, they looked like, looked like blades. And I've told you about uh, Steve Jobs and all it, all the accolades that man got, and all the con think about it, all the contributions he made to the world, and great contributions he made. The technology, the, everything that we've got now, the, the iPhone, the iPad, the, 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 the computers, and, and the technology, and being able to, to, to look at somebody live in another part of the world and talk to them and communicate with them. I mean, he done, all, he done everything a man can do. But in the end of his life, he said it was all vanity. Oh, God, yeah. mm -hmm. he, said, he said, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren, and even their grandchildren said that I've made so much money in my life, they'll never have need of nothing. And when he come in his way, he said it was all vanity. Mm -hmm. All vanity. He said, well, I've done all that for what? Think about that. 
See, so Jesus said, when we do these things, when we do, when we pray, when we do our righteous deeds, when we fast, he said, don't do it to be seen a man, do it to please God. Now, he said they have their reward. Now, that's that's fasting. And and again, Jesus is um, He said, when, when you fast. So, uh, and then let's look in verse 19, and we'll we get through these because I don't want to get into uh, 25 down. Um, verse 19. And Jesus said, now, now I want us to, as we read these, and I know we're taking sections, but they're all going to come together at the end of this chapter. All the things that Jesus is teaching. Verse 19. He also says, lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth. Now, that's a good one. Now, what is Jesus saying? Is he saying don't have anything? No. Is he saying don't work to have anything? Absolutely not. Is he saying we shouldn't strive for gain? No. We've got to understand, church, what Jesus is looking at is at the heart of man. You see? The heart of man. He said, don't lay treasures up for yourself on earth. Now he's not saying don't work, don't, don't have a retirement plan, don't, don't have anything nice. He's not saying that, that, that at all. He said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break and steal. You know, that's just the essence of everything. One of these old days, we're all going to leave this world and whatever we got, if anything, or everything we got, somebody else is going to pick it up right behind us. We, we are working for somebody else. Think about that. Everything that we work for and build and, and have, we're doing it to give to somebody else when we leave this world. Now, we, it's ours for now. We buy a house. We pay for it. We live there. We leave this world. It goes to somebody else. You just work 45 years to pay for that nice home, pay for that nice car, to pay for that nice boat, to have that little piece of property, to have you out built out there, to have your man cave and your man shop and your women's, your she shed and all that. And you and you, you work all, all your life to pay for that just to give it to somebody else. <laughs> and that's what Jesus is saying. He, he said, we don't lay up things here on earth. No, he didn't say don't, don't have anything. He said, look, when you do these things, make sure it's in the right. Hey, it's okay. He said, but don't make that your living. Don't, he said, don't put everything in that. He said, don't, don't, don't let it consume you. He said, because there's something better when you leave this world. Amen. He said, don't forget about what I'm going to give you. You see? And, and sometimes people focus so, so much on tangible and material things that they forget all about spiritual things. And so Jesus said, don't, don't relay those truths. Because look, first of all, what we leave here ain't going to last anyway. Second of all, it's just ours for a short time. Everything on this earth, church, now listen, is temporal. It's only ours for just a little while. I've got stuff that's got lifetime guarantees. <laughs> Don't you? That for the that, that thing has got a lifetime guarantee. Huh? But it's only temporal. It is. It might it might outlast me, but as far as I'm concerned, that thing's only temporal because I'm not taking it with me. It's it's just temporal. And Jesus said, whatever you do and, and whatever you store, you whatever you work for and you have, he said, don't let that consume you. Enjoy it. Use it. Use it for others, whatever. He said, but don't let it consume you because, look, that, that's just here for a short time. He said, lay up those treasures in heaven where a thief can't steal them. You ever had anything stolen? <coughs> that's the, that's the, that is the most... I think degrading feeling, isn't it? When somebody steals something from you. I mean, I don't know if the grades work. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a bad feeling when somebody steals something from you. And and I had 
I've had stuff stolen from me, and I, that had always get on me about locking my stuff up, but I never would. I just always felt, well, somebody <coughs> needed worse than me, you know, save them from busting the door down. I had a weed eater stole uh, one time, and, you know, and I just, well, you know, I just went there, man, why would anybody want to steal something? And and Jesus said, look, that's that's what they're going to do. He said, but look, when you've got something in heaven, it's yours. Hey, man, there ain't going to be no thieves in heaven, so you ain't got to worry about them stealing it. Focus on those things because those things are eternal. These are breaking still moss and corrupt. we got things. You know, here, they ain't... People hold on to things. I, my daddy, he's the world's word. He, he, I, I stay on him like white on rice. I aggravate him dead. He just does some of the craziest things sometimes. Of course, I know I do too. He's got, well, he buys books and books. And Mama, she likes the hard wood. And I, I kind of, it kind of made him mad because Mama started laughing. But, Dad, what are you buying all these books for? Well, I like to read them. I said, Daddy, go up in your room, and if you bring me, you bring every book that you've read through, I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. He couldn't find one book he's ever read through. <laughs> but that's what he does, you know. But we we, we keep we, we keep things and uh, we well I might use that. We gotta have a yard sale. We gotta clean out the garage, go in there, everything we look at. Well, I might need that. Well, I might need that. And you know, ten years down the road, there that sits. It's done. Don't even work no more. You won't even still get rid of it. It's just gonna decay. <coughs> and when you finally do get rid of something, you'll throw something away. Said I'll never use that again. And two days after you throw it away, you need it. <laughs> See, Jesus has got wonderful philosophy, don't he? Because that's just putting it in today's terms. That's exactly what he's saying. And we focus so much on these things. But he said in verse 20, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Amen. Now I know these people out there, that, uh, they'll, they'll preach against having stuff now and this and that. And, and Jesus ain't preaching about having stuff. But Jesus is looking again at the intent of Remember the rich young ruler... He come to Jesus, he was inquisitive about he heard about Jesus. And, and I believe he had a true desire to serve Jesus and to go to heaven. He heard about heaven and this sermon that Jesus preached right here and about the treasures and the riches we have in heaven and him being a, 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 an investor and a, and a smart businessman. He comes to Jesus and he said, Jesus, tell me what I must do to inherit this eternal life. Man, this is what I've been looking for. And Jesus said, well, you know the commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and, and thy neighbors thyself, and thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not He said, Lord, I've kept these all from my youth up. And apparently he had because Jesus didn't say, well, no, I know when you hadn't. So apparently he did. But Jesus said, yeah, but there's one thing that you lack. He said, what's that, Lord? I'm ready to give it up. He said, go and sell all that you've got and give it to the poor. Now, Jesus wasn't saying go and take everything you got and set it for. But this incident is here. Jesus knew that rich young ruler's heart. Yeah. What Jesus was trying to get him to understand is, look, look at your heart. And the Bible said when Jesus said go and sell all that you've got and give it to the poor, the Bible says that the rich young ruler, the rich young ruler having great goods, he said he turned, when he heard the words of Jesus, he turned away sorrowful because he was a rich man. Now see what see the story here that Jesus is trying to tell? It wasn't what the rich man had. It's what he thought about what he had. He, he wasn't willing to give it up to inherit that eternal life that he'd heard about. Church, let me tell you, there ain't nothing in this world that I'd trade for eternal life. Amen. That's true. Jesus went on to say, what would you give in exchange for your soul? And, and because his heart clung to those things those earthly things. And Jesus was trying to get him to look at that. His motives was right. His head was thinking right. But his heart. He didn't love those things more of earth than he did the things more of heaven. 
So Jesus said, don't lay up things down. Don't, don't put all, don't, don't, don't let it consume you because one of these days those things are going to pass away. But the things I've got to offer you, they'll never pass away. Now he says, uh, for where, now here, here's, here, this applies to that rich young ruler, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know what Brother Zeb said one time? He said, a fella with a dime in his pocket can be just as bad off as a man with a million dollars in the bank. We always think rich people are the only ones that's greedy and stingy. But church, that's not true. Poor people can be the same way. And then Brother Zeb went on to say, I was a young Christian, didn't understand half what he's always saying, but I, I was listening. Well, I was like an old sponge. And he, he went on to say after he told me that, he said, he said, he said, Brother Larry, it ain't what you got, it's what you think about what you got. He said, a man with a dime in his pocket, and that's all he's got. He said, he might think more about that dime than he does anything else. Whereas a man with a million dollars in the bank, that might not mean, he might have a million dollars in the bank, worked hard for it, and done good in life, but that might not mean nothing to him. Or then again, that might mean everything. He said, it's not what you got, church. It's what you think about what you got. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us here. That's why Jesus talked about he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. That's why you'll never hear me preach on tithing. I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think the people of God knows what God, what they ought to give to God. And, and, and that's, that's between them and God. But I'll tell you what, if you chunk $100 in the offering plate and you regret it, Amen. Jesus said, now, now here, I, I hear people preach like this. And we're getting ready close. Well, if you, if, you, if you give, if, you, if you're not a happy giver, then it's best just not give it all. Uh -uh. I never, I'd never be stupid enough to say that. I don't care whether you like it or not. Go ahead and give it. God can use it. Amen. You're going to lose your blessing, but God will use it. <laughs> He'll use it. But see, that, that's what he's talking about. Jesus ain't looking at, at what you give. He's looking at your heart. That's why the widow's might, she gave all that she had. That, that, that widow's might that I showed you not too long ago, that's all that she had. She didn't have anything else. And she wanted to give out to God. And he said, look, I'm telling you, she gave more than anybody here because they gave up their abundance, but she gave of her all. The, the, uh, Zer, the widow and Zarephath, willing to make their last cake and lay down and die. That's all she had. Obeyed God, made old Elijah a cake, yeah. and buddy, that, that barrel of that that barrel of uh, flour and that cruise of oil never run empty till the till the uh, drought was over. Yeah. Think about that. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't even believe it, it was running over. She had one portion left of oil and flour. Just enough to make them a cake. And that would have been all that she had. I believe every time she reached in that barrel, there's just enough. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah. Let me tell you something, church. When we trust God, he's, He'll supply our every needs according to His riches in glory. Amen? All right. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's, that's a good stopping place right there for, for tonight. Where, where's our heart at? See, Jesus ain't commanding us not to work, not to make a living, not to make investments, not to do good. But where is our heart in all that? We can do all of that and still serve God <clears throat> and put God at the forefront, realizing that eternity outweighs life here. And that's where our focus is in the end, is eternity. God's not asking us to throw everything in a pile and walk away from it. But God said, are you willing to give that up for me? And we find anybody in this book that is ever willing to give up anything for God, God blessed them a hundredfold. They never done without. And we'll get to that in this chapter. Everybody stand to you, feet. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Every bow and every close. Father, thank you for the reading of thy word. Thank you for the wonderful spirit here. God, it's just good to congregate with your people.
God, it's good to rejoice together. It's good to sing together, pray together. God, worship together. God, it's good to laugh together. Yeah. I love coming in your house and letting the joy of the Lord just yeah. come out through us, God. It's good to laugh. Yeah. Lord, some of these people to just come in here and, <laughs> Lord, just look like they bit into a green persimmon, God. Lord, they need to let the joy of the Lord just come through. God, it's good. To, laughter makes the heart merry like men. We need to learn to laugh more. Lord, we love you tonight by our heart. Now, Lord, as we've heard these teachings, they're not mine. Lord, I, they, I'd never be educated enough to come up with wisdom like this, but they're Jesus' teaching. God, all these things that we've heard thus far, God, show us where our heart is. Because Jesus said, wherever our heart's at, there's where our treasure's going to be. Don't let us be consumed with the things of this world. And Lord, I do pray that you bless uh, prosper these people. Bless them. Let them prosper, God. Lord, prosper them in their health. Prosper in their finances. Prosper them, Father, in their spirit above all things. But God, let our hearts, let our hearts be in heaven. Because where our heart is, there's our true treasure. We thank you for the treasures we have down here, God. Each and every one of them. And God, give us an abundance of them. But God, let our true treasure be in heaven. And if, if our heart's in heaven, that's where our true treasure lies. We're not looking at everything that we can get down here, but we're looking at the things we're going to get when we leave here, God. The things that are eternal, that thieves can't steal, that won't break down, won't rust, won't fade away, God, but they'll be forever and forever. We thank you for that, God. We pray you just bless everybody here now as we leave this place and watch over and protect them. Bring those on the highways and travel back to our families safely and back to our church family. Bless Darlene and Tyler. Give them a good night's sleep night and rest, God. And, and Lord, just uh, touch them in a mighty way, Father. All the other requests we ask tonight, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.